In this next unit, we're going to be talking about triangles again, but instead of doing proofs, we're going to be talking about parts of triangles. So our first set of notes is going to be on the mid-segment of a triangle, and that's very similar to the median of a trapezoid. The mid-segment of a triangle is a segment connecting the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. So for example, DE is a mid-segment. The mid-segment theorem says if a mid-segment joins the midpoints of triangle, then the segment is parallel to the third side and half as long. So if DE is a mid-segment of triangle ABC, then DE is parallel to AC, and DE equals one-half of AC. If you want to write that a different way, you can say AC divided by two. And a triangle can have more than one mid-segment. It depends on which way you're looking at the triangle. So if we want to identify all pairs of parallel segments, first of all, we can highlight one of them, XY. So XY would have to be parallel to QS. That would be our first set. And then we can use a different mid-segment if we did XW. That would be parallel to RS. And finally, WY would be parallel to QR. So any of these three middle segments could be used as a mid-segment, depending on which way you were looking at the triangle. So let's look at an example where we have numerical values. It always helps to take the numbers and place them in the diagram so you're not working blind. So PR, that's that whole segment, is 46. PQ is 40. And LN is 17. So that means we have the side of the triangle, and in most cases we're trying to find the mid-segment, except for LN. We don't know what QR is, but we can figure that out using the mid-segment theorem above. So if we look at PR, the parallel mid-segment to that would be LM. And according to our mid-segment theorem, the mid-segment is half of the side that it's parallel to. So LM is half of PR. So half of 46 is 23. And then we're looking at MN. Well, MN is parallel to QP. So MN is the mid-segment. It's half of the side it's parallel to. Half of 40 is 20. And then QR is the side of the triangle. LN is the mid-segment. So we're doing this in reverse. So QR is twice the size of LN. So each of these pieces would be 17. So the whole side would be double 17, which is 34. And then since M has to be a midpoint of the side, because that's how you create a midpoint, so L, N, and M are all midpoints of the sides of the triangle. So MR would be equal to LN, so 17. And then one final example is we want to find the value of X. So now we're going to use algebra. So our side of the triangle, the whole side is... 17x minus 18. The mid-segment is 7x. I know it's a mid-segment 
because these tick marks tell me that this is a midpoint and this is a midpoint. So I'm not assuming, I know by the markings on the triangle. So the mid segment is 7x, okay. and that equals 17x minus 18 divided by 2. This is one way you can set it up. Okay. Or you know that it takes two of these to make this, so you can double the mid segment to get the other side. So in order to undo division by 2, we multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times 7x equals 17x minus 18 divided by 2 times 2. So 14x equals, and then the 2's cancel out, we're left with 17x minus 18. We can subtract 17x. You'll get negative 3x equals negative 18. Divide by negative 3, and we know that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. X will be 6. Now let's look at example number 10, because this one we are using the fact that a mid-segment is parallel to a side, and we're going to find some missing angles of the triangle. So we still have to bring in all of our knowledge of parallel lines and what kind of angles they form, linear pairs, and so on, and the degrees in a triangle. We can start out by figuring out angle 2, because 127 and angle 2 are a linear pair which adds up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 127 gives us 53 degrees for angle 2. And then you might think, wow, now I don't know what to do. I don't have enough information. However, this segment is a mid-segment. So these two segments are parallel. And you can think of this line as a transversal. So we have parallel lines and a transversal. So we have same side interior angles. We also have corresponding angles. So angle 4 corresponds with 59. So angle 4 would be 59 degrees. This angle, angle 5 and 59, are same side interior. So you just need to do 180 minus 59. That gives you 121 degrees for angle 5. Angle 1 and 127 are also same side interior. So again, 180 minus 127 would give you 53 degrees for angle 1. And then for angle 3, you have an entire triangle here, and an, a triangle adds up to 180 degrees. So if you do 180 minus the sum of 59 plus 53, you get 68 degrees for angle 3. So when you're solving these problems, remember a mid-segment is parallel to the side of the triangle, so that allows you to use those parallel line relationships that we've done before. So we'll leave you to finish the rest of the examples.